it's recording. So welcome everybody to uh, CBOR interim. Um, uh, so uh, the agenda has been posted and I'm gonna ask you to uh, write your names into the etherpad. Uh, please note this is an ITF meeting, so the ITF note well applies. And uh, the first item on the agenda is CBOR status. Um, so I posted in the etherpad uh, some summary from the last meeting we had. There was a couple of action points. Um, so, Kasten, do you want to take this? Yeah, that, that's uh, pretty simple because I completely screwed up on this. So none, none of the action points are actually done, except that I, I did talk to additional implementers. So I actually ex expect a little bit more uh, input uh, at some point from at least one of uh, them, but it should come in the next uh, few days. So it, it should be um, useful. Um, I'm trying to share my slides at the moment. I can see them. Okay, good. So you, you, I'm, I'm using a small display. Uh, so I have a low bit rate and you can zoom in in your uh, client, so if, if that is too small for you to read. Um, it's fine, it's showing the available panel. It is, okay, interesting. Um, I'm, I'm always amazed at how, how often this software actually changes, um, which is a good thing to a certain extent, but sometimes it isn't. Um, so, uh, we wanted to have a new version out uh, four days ago. That didn't happen. And I probably need four more days to actually do that. Um, so uh, we will be very close to the end of month milestone we had set, but uh, we might uh, still uh, be making it. That's good. Um, so I haven't seen any uh, implementers review since last meeting. So it, uh, you said some more comments, are these in the GitHub or? They, they will probably come in using GitHub, yes. Okay, okay. So I will keep track of that. Yeah, we had a small amount of discussion on, on the GitHub and agreed that 65,535 was exactly the Tag number we want to have wanted to have for no tag. Um, in hindsight, that's completely obvious, uh, but it took us a while to get there. Okay. Um, good. Uh, so yeah, we're still uh, we're still up for this uh, timeline of end of the month for the next submission. Okay, so we're waiting on that before. Um, uh, we ship it or we see if anything else comes up. Um, yes. So the number 177 review the list for history that was on me. And this was about the tag policy. So I, I, I have done that. And there has been the discussion. I actually could not find um, uh, I, I kind of remember we discussed it this on a face-to-face -face as well, but I could not find minutes about that. We have too many minutes. So, <laughs> do you do you if anybody remembers when we dis discussed at which ITF we discussed uh, tag policies? Um, that would be helpful. It was a while ago. Otherwise, I, I will try to find it again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there was basically one thread that was um, um, mid of last year and or August, and it was never really concluded. So there was some discussion, but it wasn't concluded. So we will get back to that. 
before um, submission or before, yeah, before end of the month. Sounds good? Yeah, if, <clears throat> if there's a need for repair. So we can make a proposal. Yes. Okay. So I think that's good for the Cibor Biz. And if there is nothing else, Mike, I can see that he's in the call. We can talk about the uh, um, date and time tag document. Hello. Thank you. Um, as those of you who've looked at it, the date and time tag document is very simple. It has an introduction and an IANA consideration section that registers now two tags, um, one for text string date and the other for uh, numeric date. Um, the numeric date is the one that was proposed by Jorg um, and I've included him as an author. Um, this is, I think, good enough that the things could be registered. My question to the chairs here is, um, do you want to adopt this as a working group document and go quickly to working group last call to turn it into an RFC, or uh, what is your sense on how we finish such documents so they become stable? Any feedback from the chairs? Are you hearing me? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Jim, you want to take it or? Well, the problem is the answer is I don't really know what the answer is yet. Do you have one? <laughs> um, I, I, I think that would be a good, um, Good way, good way forward, but. Um, and that's sort of a normal ITF thing to do. Yeah. yeah. And Kasten also wanted to say something. I don't know if he has more opinion, but I'd like to hear from more people. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that there are two parts to this question. One is, um, what is actually the status we give these uh, documents? Is this an informational document? Is this uh, a standard track uh, document? Um, and uh, we have certain pockets in the IETF where where we have lots of documents that register something, and these are all informational, but then they are uh, being used uh, with normative intent in, in other documents. So essentially, the, the IESG review for... Because, but when people actually, uh, we have a bit more of review because before it gets added to the down ref list, and that that is a common way of handling things in the IETF, um, and um, it, it would be a little bit of a default way of doing things uh, for me. Um, so. People can also simply reference the registry. I'm not sure that, that this is a very well-established way, but I, I have at least seen that. Uh, so maybe you can have a, a normative document that is not actually going uh, to the defining document, but to the registry. Uh, so that, that would be another way uh, to handle the, the down ref 
um, situation. So th th that's a part where I think we we need a little bit area director input on on what's the the procedure that the ISG will will like us to follow. And um, on on the uh, number of documents that that we will get uh, this way, of course that that could be quite a few. Um, so I continue to believe that maybe we should uh, do some consolidated um, documents. There are several tag definitions that are actually quite useful that currently only exist in, in some uh, random websites. And uh, we could do that in order to uh, we, we could take that input and consolidate it into a federal tags document or something like that, um, in order to have an archival uh, document in one place. So that that would be my proposal. What what we should do once we are done with uh, CBOVIS. So I understand that there's a lot of various tags that one could define and that may be defined in multiple places. And this working group could choose to do a consolidated document. In this case, this is motivated by a specific request from ISO for a fast track mobile driver's license piece of work. And I think we owe it to ISO both to finish this quickly and to make it an RFC. ISO and you know a lot of the national bodies uh, respect RFCs, they might not be so happy referencing something that's really just in a registry, but pointing to an unfinished draft. So for this document, I'd like to request that we do working group adoption. I'm fine if the area director wants it to be informational to make that change at the time it's adopted, but I don't want this to get hung up for a year in a process where we agglomerate many unrelated things. Yeah, so for, for me, that, that kind of uh, so really needs or, or would, would be yeah, uh, then we should for that. I completely agree with that. Could I get the chairs to send out a call for adoption to the mail? So I think we can already, I, I think, so the document is definitely in scope of the charter. Uh, we can start the call for adoption. Uh, we can already have it, I think, today and hear how many people have read or uh, support adoption of this document. Please. Manifest yourself. Carsten. Manifesting, okay. Uh, I can voice an opinion. This is Hank. Uh, sorry, line. Hi. Um, Go ahead, Hank. So I I think uh, it's rather straightforward. I have to agree with uh, Mike here. Um, um, it's, uh, it's all about the uh, um, representation of a date and a days since epoch. So uh, I think it's it's both uh, a such a semantic representation here uh, that is changing, and it is just another uh, yeah another representation, both of them. So um, I am I am I'm totally fine with this. We have another uh, uh, draft forthcoming that is focusing on on time, and um, so uh, I assume that um, um, these are not conflicting, and therefore we can we can separate this and have ISOs. And yes, why? There's no reason to to stall. And now next in queue, if uh, I'm fine. And Hank, I'd be fine to review the time one when it comes along, but I agree that they're not <coughs> conflicting. Yeah. So this is Lawrence. <clears throat> I've read it. I did a an initial implementation of it. Um, I support it. Although I do get a little worried that we're uh, 
have too many time formats and see more at some point, but uh, uh, this one is fine. Thank you. Yes, and I see some more plus one, Ira and Peter as well. Uh, so I think this is uh, great and uh, we will confirm in the mailing list or we will um, start a call for adoption in the mailing list as well. I think I like the idea of, of actually taking the sense of the room, even in, in uh, um, <clears throat> online meetings, uh, because we will have online meetings for a long time and just confirm it on the mailing list. Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe people don't really have an opinion, but if people do have an opinion, it's good that they get a chance to express it uh, when they can. Um, so, Hank, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to add to Lawrence. Hi, Lawrence, by the way, I didn't see you. Um, uh, this is about dates, and, and there's a subtle but very uh, distinct differentiation between uh, dates and times, I think, or time references, effectively. So I, I'm not concerned about having too many texts. This is a separate uh, lane, so to speak. OK. OK. Great. So. I think we can move forward. Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next on the agenda, CDDL freezer that was left over from last meeting. Just then go ahead. <clears throat> Do you see, see my slides? Yes. Okay. Um, so we have maintained more or less this this freezer document from discussions we had about uh, CDDL, um, and um, there are a number of things in there uh, that uh, we probably need to do sooner or later. Uh, so, for instance, one message on the mailing list reminded us that that we really need to think about file inclusion and and export and import interfaces uh, um, and so on, which, which is also listed in the freezer uh, document. Uh, so we, we should go ahead and develop some, some straw in how, how we are going to do this. Um, there are a couple of things that actually could be taken out of the freezer document and uh, processed as extensions for CDDL. And one is this uh, .abnf uh, thing that, that has been around uh, uh, for a while. And I mentioned that two weeks ago. Um, so um, th this is essentially the, the, the whole proposal on one slide as an example. Um, so the idea would be that uh, like we have control operators for doing regex, uh, we might as well have control operators for uh, doing abnf. Um, and since ABNF is a uh, multi-line, this is uh, using a slightly ugly uh, hack, which is uh, using the byte string syntax instead of the, the text string syntax for the ABNF. Um, yeah, uh, just because the byte string syntax uh, includes new lines and the text string syntax doesn't because it's inherited from JSON. Uh, so th that is a little weird, but it saves us uh, uh, from actually having to change the CDDL uh, parser. So uh, what you see here is um, uh, CDDL production in the middle of this slide, RFC 339 equals. And this essentially means we are defining uh, one string here um, that is uh, containing the, the ABNF. Uh, from RFC 339 that we're interested uh, in. So the, the example actually would be used in a context like, like Mike, uh, Mike's draft. So we have the definitions for date for year and, and all that. And um, actually, since this is also using material from RFC 5234, uh, um, th there is a separate uh, string uh, with that material, and we're using another control operator 
uh, which is currently called .cat, that, that might change, to concatenate uh, these two things. And then finally, in the place where this is used, uh, further up in, in the slide, where we have full date and, and date time, um, there, there is the name of a production uh, followed on a new line with the ABNF. So this is something that can be used with .ABNF uh, to actually reference uh, this production. That, that's essentially my uh, proposal. There are a few little things that probably need to be ironed out. Uh, one is uh, ABNF is, is operating in an abstract space of characters, but we have to map this abstract space to something concrete that can be represented uh, in CBOR. So I'm proposing to have two variants, uh, one where ABNF is used for describing uh, UTF-8 characters, and the other one where ABNF is used to describe bytes. So there would be something like an ABNF for, for UTF-8 and an ABNF for bytes. And then for, for .cat, we might want to use a slightly different con construct called .join, and I think we have to make a few examples uh, for that. So this is not completely done, and in particular, I haven't actually implemented uh, that yet. Um, but I think it's a proposal that, that should be uh, implementable enough and stable enough at this point uh, that we could adopt it as a working group document. And uh, it would go right into the existing extension points of RFC 8610. So we don't wouldn't need to actually re-spin this in any way or update it in any way. It just defines uh, three, uh, three or four. Uh, new control operators, and, and that's all uh, that's needed to, to make this uh, happen. So my question would be uh, whether people think this is something we, we should be uh, pursuing. Um, of course, th that point of view will depend a lot on whether you're the specification you are working on right now actually uses something that is already specified in ABNF or not. Um, uh, but for those that actually do, uh, this is a really useful uh, extension that, that saves you from having to re-encode ABNF in uh, regular expressions or something like that. Any opinion? Uh, well, this is Hank. Um, you selected a single item from the freezer, which is fine because this is uh, basically um, yeah better tested, so to speak. Um, so, question is, how do we uh, compartmentize this? I assume. Uh, I uh, my 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 suspicion is that there might be uh, more than the uh, ABMF control or the the corresponding BF inputs effectively. Um, that we could do in the first chunk. So my my question would be: uh, Are there other things that are in high demand, so we have to do it, or uh, that we want to uh, stack into the first uh, control point extension draft? So this is uh, kind of related to uh, what the chair said started and and Carsten working on. Um, when we did that questionnaire and we and I went around and asked people, I don't know if you remember, what was that ITF 105 maybe? Um, and now that got uh, kind of on the back burner. But yeah, the question would be how um, urgent this is compared to the rest of the um, items on that list. And um, does it make sense to to just do it right now separately from everything else? I think I would like to see more documents rather than fewer documents, so that 
we can deal with each item, each extension point independently in terms of progression. So I, so I don't, I don't think I'd like to see a big, huge document with lots of different things in it. Because that means that everything progresses at the rate of the slowest one. Whereas we break things up, then each can progress at his own rate. That makes sense, but there is also the um, um, the fact that the author might be the same for several of those. Um, so it's not parallel. <laughs> I, I don't know. It can be parallel working, sure, but um, time is limited. So there will be some prioritization to be done anyway. Yes, um, <clears throat> so um, I'm usually pretty efficient at doing things where I know how to do them. Um, so the, the, the other thing that I think needs to be extracted from the uh, freezer now and, and uh, worked on is the JSON format uh, because it, it, uh, it has been uh, become clear that uh, this is needed in, in places like SDF uh, and so on. And uh, so th that's another thing where where it's pretty clear how to do it. It does require some review from people, from other implementers, for instance, uh, but it, it can be done without taking a humongous amount of uh, time. While doing something like a module interface, which I think would be the most, the highest priority thing right now, that actually requires a few proposals uh, going through discussions with that. It's not something where I would know how to do it. And um, I don't think we need to wait for all the highest priority things to be done before we can uh, finish some of the, the more, more targeted uh, use lower priority things. Hank. Yeah, I just try to. Uh, we are the small group here, so maybe I, we don't need the queue. But um, from the top of my head, I would assume that it makes sense. And uh, please uh, tell me if you don't think this, but I've, I'm pretty sure this is okay to bundle controls in a because they're using the extension point for CD uh, controls into a single draft, and then, for example, have the uh, uh, JSON representation of CDDL in a separate document. Uh, just picking out uh, two obvious uh, sides of the coin, I assume. Does that make sense, sense to me? Yeah, I would like to have that. <laughs> so, what what other controls do we have in in a ready to use shape? So, I'm I'm pretty sure that. Uh, could uh, uh, address the bit field one. Okay. I assume. Also, uh, I, I think it's it's uh, very intuitive. Um, I, I don't see a, a large can of worms. Uh, Sorry again. I think it's a large can of worms. Yes, can, of course. Again, we <laughs> we can do the ABNF thing because twenty years were already spent on on honing that one. So. Uh, we don't have to invent another text-based uh, grammar. Uh, for the midfield side, um, I think we have a lot of design space. Uh, so I expect a lot of discussions before that gets finished. Oh, you want to separate ABNF uh, because ABNF was not a uh, ABNF controls, okay. So if, if you are, um, I was choosing JSON as an example because that was not a control. And that is a, a relatively well scoped uh, problem statement. Um, yeah, we can we can always start the draft. I think with all the controls, uh, see what progresses well, and then make a cut. Sorry for the pun to uh, stop there, and then uh, put the rest into the next document and finalize the things we think are progressing well enough. Just working on it and yeah. unfreeze it basically is the, the thing I would yeah. like to do because I'm waiting. So, in the meanwhile, I think a more fleshed out cuts concept really would help 
<laughs> and yes. uh, so that is uh, freezed for way too long now, I think. So unfreezing would be my first priority, then grouping basically into controls and non-controls and then progress these until we uh, uh, realize, okay, these controls are actually really complicated. And then we stage, uh, stagger them into uh, two drafts, uh, the accomplishable ones after, I don't know if they say, a quarter or six months or something, and then uh, go with the rest. Yeah, one procedure of, of doing this would be to keep uh, all control proposals, control operator proposals in one document at this point. And then at some point decide these are the ones that we will ship in 2020. And uh, then we keep, we, we split it up and keep a document for things that we will ship in 2021 and later and so on. Yeah. So yes, I think I that, that might work. Okay. So I would also um, um, support my proposal. <laughs> that's fine. I think that's good. Any more opinions about this? Both the form and the content. The form meaning um, one document, several documents, etc. Uh, this is Ira. Um, I would favor, I think, several documents. I would be particularly happy to see ABNF because another standards body that I work in in the last 25 years, all of our specifications that conceivably would be CBOR encoded are in ABNF. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, Carsten, I, I would say go ahead and uh, submit a draft then that people um, can start commenting on and ultimately it's up to you as author uh, while the document is still individual to decide what you feel like what you think makes more most sense to have in there um, and this is obviously uh, in Seaboard Charter so we can possibly rediscuss that uh, when it gets adopted. Right. But yeah, it, probably the more focus it is, the easiest it would be to move it forward quicker. I mean, that seems logical. Anything more f about the freezer? I think that was everything you had. That was the one thing I wanted to focus on. As I said, the JSON uh, thing is, is another thing we uh, could extract pretty quickly. And uh, the, the, on the, on the, that's on the uh, production side, on the consumption side, I think it's pretty clear that we need to do this export import uh, interface uh, thing, and uh, we, we need to uh, make extra proposals. So the freezer document doesn't currently provide a proposal uh, for that, and that would be the next step. Okay. Great. Uh, next, I think that was all we had on the agenda for today. If there is any other business, need to discuss. If there is nothing else, uh, I'd like to remind, I think everybody signed the blue sheet. That's great. Uh, also, we have these, uh, I, I see a lot of people that are joining either for the first or second time, and we have these uh, interims every two weeks, so you're very welcome to join. And um, I think that's it for today, and I'll talk to you in two weeks. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.